Anaximander, also from Miletus, was a student of Thales, and like all of Thales' followers, he agreed that all the different stuff in the universe could be reducible to one thing, but he kind of laughed at the whole water idea. If everything was made out of water, why hasn't everything gone back to being water, he argued. If this was really how Anaximander saw things, then he would have been one of the first people to point out the principle of entropy, which states that all things seek a state of equilibrium. Remember, we're only basing what we know of the pre-Socratics based on Aristotle's accounts. For Anaximander, the ultimate stuff of the universe couldn't be one of the four elements. For him, it had to be a big, unspecific thing, because anything specific is opposed to all other specific things. But for him, this thing isn't opposed to anything, because everything is it. And he named this big, unspecific thing the unlimited, or the boundless, translated from the word aperon, or at least I think that's how it's pronounced. According to Anaximander, this boundless, or aperon, was once upon a time floating through a big cosmic vortex before, kablamo, it was disrupted by some sort of disaster and gave rise to opposites, dry and wet, hot and cold, sauerkraut and ice cream, and all these things appear to us in various forms of the four elements. And these four elements become their own opposites and antagonistic ways, but balance each other out ecologically. For example, during a time where one element reigns supreme, let's just say water during a flood, then it's eventually going to be balanced out by its opposite at some other time, say, I don't know, fire during a forest fire or drought or something. Now according to Aristotle, there are a few other ideas attributed to Anaximander. Here's a few of them. One. Because of the plurality of all things, there must be a plurality of universes. 2. The Earth needs no support because it's smack bang in the middle of the universe, or at least our own, and is equidistant from all things. Remember Thales' log floating idea? And number 3. The four elements are in charge of different circles of the cosmos. Earth is the heaviest, so it's in the centre. Then there's a nice, lovely layer of water sitting around it wherever it can. Then there's a big cushion of air around the Earth and the water. And then there's the lightest element, fire out at the very edge, but we can only see it through pinprick punctures in the sky, which is his explanation for stars. Now I'm sure you've heard the term pinprick punctures in the sky before, as an image for the stars, whether it be in a song or a poem your ex-boyfriend sobbed to you outside your bedroom window. Well it came from an Anaximander, not the phrase, but the image, and it's been referenced right up to the 7th century, even after the death of Copernicus. You'd imagine after all that time, people would have realised that Anaximander was, you know, wrong. Anyway, next up in the series, Anaximenes.